Hello and welcome back to StarCraft 1 Part 40, and in this final episode, we will be finishing, uh, well, the Eye of the Storm. Um, as I mentioned, we're eventually going to, you know, just stop defending the Terran base. I don't, uh, it's much, it's much better at gathering minerals than the Protoss starting base, but I've already moved my Protoss starting base to a more mineral-heavy line, so yeah, I don't really so need... Fuck I don't really need the uh, additional uh, resources coming in, coming in from the Terran base. Oh, dude, the, none of the Terrans need to survive except for Raynor. They're not important. Yep. And that's, uh, that makes you choose uh, to whom you owe the greatest allegiance, and I find it somewhat ironic that you are favoring the alien Protoss versus the more familiar, recognizable human Terrans. Well, aside from James, the Protoss are just flat-out cooler uh, than a majority of the Terrans. They got style. You want a piece of me, boy? These guys look like they're on life support. <laughs> um, well, Phoenix is, so there's that. He is? Yeah, Phoenix is effectively on, ice, on life support. Like Darth Vader life support? Not Darth Vader life support, but similar. Um, he is pretty much uh, plugged in directly to the Kala, which is the psionic uh, the psionic network that all Protoss use for communication and uh, empathy. Empathy. They have to load empathy. <laughs> Effectively, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, dude, why are you trying to send me nudie pictures? Don't you know that my girlfriend looks at my phone? She's gonna get angry with me again. And... There. Now we save. Now we save. Let us do our save. first major push. Meow. Now we're going to siege. <laughs> Okay. Any minute now. Damn it! That one is still been affected by plague. Let's um. Th do do they have like a self terminate button? Uh, total annihilation does, but I don't think that dragon. I don't think that uh, that the Protoss units do. Fuck. I think I think that was something they added to StarCraft too, because I'm pretty sure I remember that you can kill you could totally just kill your own units in order to make room for fresh ones. Is it is it the Control D command? Because that's the one it is in Total Annihilation. Well, you see, if it wasn't actually was I? I think I was. I was. <laughs> that's right. I was using a fucking. The last time I was playing StarCraft, I was playing on a Macintosh computer with a Windows keyboard, so I don't think anything was working. <laughs> ah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, our uh, our dark our DTs are a bit in the way, so they are uh, preventing our dragoons from. Oh down. boy! The ramp! Oh, the ramp of justice! For only the wary of heart, the stalwart, and those willing to exert themselves down a goddamn rock slope can actually ascend to the higher echelons of success. God damn the pathing in this game. <laughs> yeah, the pathing is just fucking terrible. A it's dragoon like, can eat up like an entire grain, It's like watching grains of sand go down an hourglass. Now, mind you, to be perfectly honest, the only real threats uh, for this map are actually are actually the Red Zerg brood, because they're the only ones that we really have to fight through. The uh, purple Zerg brood uh, gathers resources and such, and it will uh, and it will occasionally attack Rainer, but that's about all it will successfully do. Oh, thank God we have invisible seatbelts. Plague. I have returned. That was the best shit that I and had the, uh, the green one isn't Plague Cloud. The green one is is, is in Snare. And in Snare is just it is just uh, inconvenient. Uh, what in Snare does is it slows it slows the unit down that's affected by it, and it also um, 
and it also reveals them while they're cloaked. I'm not sure if Plague actually reveals cloak. I think it does. It you should, would think so, you know, right? It's a graphic it's effect. Like, it's, like oh, if, it's like if you took an invisibility potion and somebody spray-painted part of your body, then you could see where the spray paint is. Yeah. Similar concept. Ugh, <laughs> oh, it is so fucking awkward walking those, watching those guys just attempt. No, they, they succeed, but they have to attempt. Because not on every yes. attempt is each one successful. <laughs> we're almost, we're almost, it's like we're leading a fucking kindergarten class. Some of them don't even know how to walk correctly. Toddlers. We're teaching them how to walk downstairs. We decided that it wasn't as good an idea as we thought it was. Yeah. Dun, 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 All right, let's see if we can poke. Uh, let's see if we can poke a hole through this red base. <laughs> <laughs> Go, my dark Templars. Focus on, uh, focus on the hatchery. But see, look, three, three fucking drones on resources, and yet uh, the last time that they attacked us, they sent they sent a, a force of like six mutalists and and three ultralists. You can't generate that many resources with three fucking probes. Well, I'm saying. God damn it, if Shea Gorath is a level 256 with 10,000 HP, of course you're not gonna fucking kill him. He's got too much starting resources. <laughs> and instant kill powers. I don't remember who, what video game Shea Gorath is from. Shea Gorath was the Mad God who is introduced in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion DLC The Shivering Isles. He is a findable NPC character in the game. He is immortal. He has a stupid amount of health. And if he waves his cane at you and says a clever thing, suddenly you find yourself falling approximately 1,000 feet from a point above the pit, the Hill of Suicides. And then you die. Huh. Is that why it's called the, uh, the Hill of, Sil of Suicides? Well, I'm not sure if it is exactly the hill of so I think I think it's a different place. It's a it's specific. It's more like the hill of punishment. So there's a hill of punishment, and then the, and then there's the hill of suicides. Of course, it would be suicide to attack Shea Gorath because it is scripted that the fall will kill you. <laughs> I bet those guys have really cool shoes. I don't know why my, I don't know how I lost so many forces there. Yeah, I, I lost I lost track of the exact number counts. We had like 95 when last I was seriously paying attention and now we're at 85. So that means you only lost like 5 units. That's that's not too bad. See, you got you got that two more. I saw more of the carnage than I did cuz uh I'm not I don't <laughs> actually pay attention to the sign numbers. I, I don't. saw less. The sign numbers are important. <laughs> The side numbers are very important. I totally understand that. But they're also, you know, at the top of the screen with my resources. And I don't really need to know how many resources I have constantly. Yeah. I mean... I mean, a number count is... I mean, you know, you know it's an even better indication that your forces are dying is uh, watching their bodies explode in combat. <laughs> yep. That's what I like about StarCraft is there. There is a lot. The game gives you a lot of information. You can use this information in different ways. <laughs> All right. Seems like we're back to square. Send in the troops. <laughs> We're not at square one, honestly. We we are significantly farther ahead. Yeah, well, we're, we're destroying just, their forces it, now. Damn it! I lost my observer, oh, and boy. as a direct consequence, my my units are out of position, so they are dead. All right, we we have hit a new low point. Go, go, my clumsy crusaders. <laughs> If we can 
take down this particular <laughs> this particular hive and uh, and make it so that they no longer have a, a, a have uh, drones here. Well, then uh, then red then red will no longer be a threat. The scourge tends to rip apart your hero characters. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's and that's the tragic part about the the whole thing where they must survive because then you're not gonna fucking use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There should be just you know what they should they could have done is make different endings. This is the last mission. What if they die during the onslaught? What if they live? Uh, it would hurt the story a lot because all because all of Wings of Liberty is depending on Rainer surviving here. <laughs> I bet he had a great story to tell during Wings of Liberty. Oh boy, oh boy, here here comes teeth. All right, all right, we got momentum. I've got four gateways almost constantly pumping out dragoons, and I'm still not, and I'm still not doing this nearly as fast as I'm supposed to. <laughs> Make them explode. The I could have swore that that, that the Terran base uh, fell through, but. Quite apparently, no. The, the, they just stopped attacking the Terran base. The well, first time I did course. this, uh, the first time I did this, I promise you, I lost the Terran base, and not because, and not because uh, I was failing to defend it. No, I actually pumped a bunch of resources into attempting to defend the Terran base, and I just couldn't do it. Here, I barely did anything with the Terran base, and well, they stopped attacking it. Well, they're definitely going to stop attacking it now. You've destroyed their. Uh major spawn point because I noticed that the, the computer could start off with whatever it wants but that's just it. it it can't just magically add more resources it has to follow the rules of the game in order to add resources no it, it, it in fact does magically add resources fuck <laughs> It feels like it doesn't do that, but I promise you, it totally fucking does that. Well, it does a great job at making me think that this game is fair. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it is horrendously stacked against you. Well, that's just what will make victory sweet. Challenge. Now, quite interestingly enough, you do not need to use their tool of uh, Tastadar or uh, Raynor in order to deal uh, the lethal blow to the, to the uh, Overmind. Hello, Paragraph. into a collision course with the Overmind. If I can channel enough of the Dark Templar's energy through the hull of the Gantrathor, I should be able to bring swift death to the accursed... Batman, no! Yeah, this is pretty much the ending to uh, The Dark Knight Rises, so... May I do watch over you. Except Tassadar stays dead for the, uh, for the rest of the story. 32 APM. Yay! Ding dong, ding dong, ding. And now we have the most epic cutscene in the entirety of StarCraft 1. Woo! Explosions! Flying alien ships! Please note that those are supposed to be mutalisks, and yet they have the ability to fit inside the, uh, the hull of the Gandrathor quite easily. Oh god, that's what Tassadar looks like? Yep, that's what Tassar looks like. He effectively has got the body of a zealot. His eyes, once a beautiful blue, have become an angry yellow. He realizes that well, he, must. he is channeling energies that he's not uh, that he's not, uh, not necessarily the master of, as you can see now with these sparklies. He's face to face with his destiny. And this is the Overmind attempting to flee. We're not going to let that happen. Tarakalar! I love the zoom in, man. That is a great zoom in. Ha! Hami, hami, ha. Yay! We exploded. Whoosh. And, turn ourselves and it cuts into... the overmind in half and then disintegrates it. 
Epic Energy Channel, can can ability. Woo. But yeah, StarCraft 1 is pretty awesome. It's not the best of, it's not the best RTS game of the pre 2000s but it's pretty damn cool. Wow. What a great bang at the end. Yep. And then there was peace. And now for the galaxy. epilogue. As the chaotic swirling energy subsided, a heavy silence settled over the battlefields of Iron. Due to Tassadar's noble sacrifice, the Overmind was now dead and the Zerg swarms were scattered and broken. But as the heroes surveyed their once glorious homeland, they realized that their victory had cost them all but their lives. Iyer was left nothing more than a smoldering ruin. Those few Protoss who survived the final battle could only wonder what the future would hold for their race. And far away, on the distant planet Char, Kerrigan, the self-styled Queen of Blades, knew that the time of her, her, of her ascension was at hand. And in the next episode, um, we'll start over with a different game, and after that game, we'll move into Brood War. So there! Yay! That's the end of the carrot, everybody. Munch.